fellow workers in the government, builders of this nation, mga kabataan, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to join you in this exciting time in Philippine history. It's me, Sir JP. Join me for a period of discussion about choosing one's path for service. This discussion is about leadership and career pathing. Let me begin by saying that life is just a fleeting moment. In other words, we will never stay that long here on earth. We are just living on a temporary world with temporary choices. However, we have to make the best out of our temporary stay to make it at least worthwhile to us and to the people we live with. All of us are created unique, like our fingerprints. We are destined to become our own version of ourselves. No one is the same. Even identical twins may have different choices. What do I want to point out here is that we should not compare ourselves with other people's successes. We can make them as an inspiration. But believe me when I tell you that what may be applicable to another person may not be applicable to you. In this world full of uh, ups and downs, of segues, U-turns, and detours, your own enemy is yourself. Don't believe on what the zodiac sign will tell you. Don't believe what the crystal ball dictates. Because if you do, huh, the maximum thing you can do is just to make them as guides, but never rely on them. I want to share my story with you because my life is an imperfect one, which makes it a perfect example for today's discussion. Back in 2008, ladies and gentlemen, modesty aside, I graduated in a public school in Iloilo, Pavia National High School. I was awarded as class salutatorian of the special science curriculum. And through hard work, I was luckily awarded as one of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and the Department of Education. Being a well-rounded student back then, it was very hard for me to choose a course for college. I was a campus journalist, but I did not enroll in journalism. I love navigation, yet I did not enroll marine transportation or marine engineering. I made a lot of miniature houses and buildings and even blueprints, yet I did not enroll architecture. I am fond of collecting toy planes, yet I did not enroll in a flying school to take aviation. My highest grade in high school was physics, yet I did not enroll in a science-related course. I teach children during Sundays, but I did not enroll education. I was an elected SK chairperson of our barangay, yet I did not enroll political science. What I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that 13 years ago, I enrolled for nursing here in Iloilo. I did so because that was the most in-demand course during that time. A lot of nurses were hired abroad and earning a lot. And I must admit that I was lured not only because it could potentially give me bigger salary, but because it was my mom's dream for me. In high school, I was president 
of the supreme student government. I had four years of experience when it comes to student government. It is on this note, listeners, ladies and gentlemen, that I want to tell you that it was not surprising that while I was in the College of Nursing, I was very active in school activities. In fact, I was an official of the Nursing Student Council. For fast forward to two years in the course, and while I was having my duty at the hospital, I realized that nursing was not meant for me and that my heart beats for another passion. Yan ang mahirap sa atin. When we are armed with skills, we sometimes struggle which skill to use and when will we use that particular skill. So what happened? Rewind muna. In 2007, I was elected SK Chairperson of our Barangay, Barangay Purok Dos in Pavia. After that election, I ran for SK Federation of Pavia. It was always a dream for me to become the voice of young people in the town of Pavia. However, I lost by only one vote. Nawala na ko ng gana sa politika. Yet just after two years, I, I did my job very sincerely into the best that I can. That energy resurrected and forced me to think deeply about what I really want in life. So I decided, I decided to run for Municipal Councilor of Pavia. And in order to win, I must project an image which tells people that as young as I was, I must be ready for higher level politics. And so, I shifted course to political science and public administration. It was a double course. During the campaign period, many people doubted me because I was only 18 years old. However, I practiced my speeches. I strengthened my following. My campaign went on a personal level of this course and I gained momentum. Amidst being an independent candidate, I don't have any party to, to say something. I, I won that election. I was very grateful I won that election. I never expected to win that election, but with the support of people around me, especially the young people, they brought JP Peniol to that pedestal in the Sangguniang Bayan. If you feel you are not destined for something, try again. There is no harm in trying. During my term as counselor, many people, even my fellow colleagues, doubted my capacity. At the end of my term, first term as municipal counselor, I have proven to them that as young as I was, I was capable of drafting and passing ordinances, which is for the betterment of our community. Shortly after I graduated political science and public administration at Central Philippine University in 2013, I was appointed by President uh, Benigno Simeon Aquino III, or Pinoy, as Commissioner of the National Youth Commission. Being the NYC chairperson for localization or local government, I got the chance to advocate for reforms in the Sangguni Ang Kabataan or SK. Pinoy signed it in 2015 during our term. Who would think that a defeated candidate for SK Federation elections would become someone who will be one of the drivers of change in the SK system? You are destined for something greater in life. Some successes are made for people who are determined. Let me borrow the words of Miss Universe, Catriona Gray. To everyone with a dream, know 
that your dreams are valid and on your path you are never denied but only redirected. When I resigned from the National Youth Commission in 2016, I went back to my original passion, teaching. If you could still remember, I wanted to become a seaman and a teacher, but I graduated political science. And so I fused my dreams. I pursued teaching political science subjects at Iloilo Merchant Marine School and later became the school's chief operating officer. If you might ask, sayang naman, kasi hindi masyado na maximize ang pagiging Polsai graduate. I also serve as staff of 2nd District Congressman Michael Goreseta and Iloilo City Councilor Candice Magdalene, Mrs. Lex Tupas. I also do serious staffs. Needless to say, Success is made through vision and action, not through the stars, which we hope will align for all of us. If we wait for the stars to align, our fleeting moment might already be finished. No other people can be credited for your success, or nobody can be blamed with your failure. Other people may have suggestions or something to say, but at the end of the day, it is you who will make your own decisions. They say, we are born only once. We should not take this life for granted. We should try to create a life meaningful to us and purposeful for others. Live a life with a purpose and make sure that the said purpose is not only beneficial to you, but to others as well. If you might ask, why did I venture into public service? Because I believe that public service is one of the noblest professions or vocations because it gives you the chance to transform the lives of others, especially the less privileged. Kindly look at this illustration you can see. In the Philippines, the average lifespan of a person is 70 years old. Say for instance, you spend the first seven years for preparatory school or prep, then another six years for elementary, another four years for junior high school. Now we have two years for senior high school. And of course, if you want to pursue a higher degree, you have to take college, which is uh, on a minimum of four years. You decided to start working at age 23. And say, for instance, uh, you decided to stay on that job until you retire at age 65. Then spend your retirement until you die. What this illustration tells us is that for 42 long years, you have to work for a job to make a living. These 42 years can be the defining years of your life. It can make or break you. It is in this note that we have to choose proper career so that we can live with contentment in that 42 years in the corporate world. They say that if you do what you love and love what you do, the job is just a hobby. So if you get to do a job which you like for 42 years until you retire, you will probably retire happy. In choosing a career, dear leaders, you have to consider various factors such as doing what you love and loving what you do. Can you make your passion as a living? Will you pursue your passion even if it will not give you much income? Are you contented with meager or small income but doing things that you love? Are you willing to do something you don't like just to earn? These questions must be answered along the way. And with this, I ask you to dare. Number one. Discover and decide. 
Now ask yourself, what are your interests, values, skills, strengths? Ano bang meron ka? What talent do you have? Then you sculpt for that talent within you, develop that talent, study what needs to be improved with your talent. What careers are aligned with your interests and talents? Which college courses are connected with your strengths? And which organizations will you join to align and improve your skills towards the career that you wanted to have? Let me tell you that the organizations that you join now will provide you one of the best experiences to help prepare yourself in the real world full of opportunities. Ang sabi nga nila, when you are looking for a job, what is important is your intellectual quotient or your IQ. When you look for a job, ang kailangan dyan ay ang grades mo. Because uh, isa sa mga requirements ng mga employers ay transcript of records. Then you have to show them that you have good grades. Because it also means you studied hard. Uh, you studied very hard. You, you dedicated for your studies way back when you were in college or high school. It simply shows that you have a good work and uh, study habits. But what will allow you to stay in the corporate world is your emotional quotient or EQ. Your teamwork, your ability to blend with others, your ability to stand out when needed, your, your love for your co-workers and many others. That is what you need to discover while you are still young. Number two. It is not enough that we only dream, but you have to act on your dreams. As you invest in your career, it is better to know how much time, energy, and money you are willing to spend in order to fulfill that career. Let me tell you that each college course requires a different set of payments, especially when it comes to tuition fees, miscellaneous fees, and even trainings. So if you want to become a seafarer, you will be needing thousands and thousands of money, not just for tuition fee, not just for miscellaneous fee, but more on the trainings that you need. Because before you, have, before you will be given the chance to go aboard, you have to take a lot of trainings as accreditations so that you will be uh, recognized as a competent seafarer or a deck cadet or an engine cadet for that matter. Then you have to achieve baby steps and level up next time. I want to tell you the story of a cake. Like for instance, I will give you a big cake. Te maubos mo na dayo ng isa ka cake, natural hindi. So what will you do with the cake? You have to slice the cake into smaller slices. Ganun ang mga pangarap natin sa buhay. If you want to become a seaman, malaking pangarap yan. But, no matter how big our dreams are, for as long as we have that determination, uh, and we slice that big dream into smaller dreams, and you will eat the slices one by one, sooner or later, you will achieve that big dream, ladies and gentlemen. What do I mean with this? If you want to become a seafarer, then the first dream is to graduate prep. Second dream is to graduate elementary. Then you graduate junior high school. You graduate senior high school. Then you graduate in college. When you graduate in college, seafarer ka na ba? Hindi pa. You have to undertake trainings. You have to get the seaman's book. No? Seaman ka na ba? You will not be called a seaman unless otherwise you already uh, you are already bound to go on board. So when you are already on board, that's another dream. Now, do you stop there? No, because you want to be promoted from being an oil uh, an oiler 
to becoming the fourth engineer, third engineer, second engineer, until you become the chief engineer. In the case of the deck, you begin with the OICNW, then you have to be the third officer, second officer, chief officer, until you become the captain of that ship. Of that ship. So you achieve baby steps, one by one. Now, paano pa maging successful dyan? Aside from slicing the cake into smaller slices, you have to share that cake with others. So you find people with the same interests. Then you study together. You become successful together. Become better every single day. If you committed any mistakes, you can correct it and eventually overcome these mistakes. But don't repeat the same mistakes again. Third, you have to react positively. Strengthen your support system and surround yourself with positive people. Sadly, some of our family members or even friends will not support us simply because they just don't believe that we can do it. Then make some enlightenment. Enlighten them. Try to talk to them. However, if they choose not to support you on your many attempts to ask their support, let them go. You deserve it. You don't deserve people who don't choose you as well. You find some inspiration and surround yourself with all the positivity. Kagaya na lamang ng mga barkada mo na nasa probinsya. You want to study at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. But their concern is, paano na ang inuman ninyo? Paano na ang mga gala ninyo? Paano na ang mga bike-bike ninyo? You know, biking can wait. Huh? Partying can wait. But along the way, you have to budget your time. That within this span or a spur of the moment, you can achieve something. Because at the end of the day, when you become successful, I'm pretty sure they will also be happy. But yes, please educate them. Please tell them that what you are doing now is not only for yourself, but for your family, for your future family, and to your friends as well. Furthermore, people will always have something to say, whether you become successful or you fail. Take criticisms and prove them wrong. The test of your determination is when you continue to do things even with strong resistance from others. If you believe you are on the right path amidst all the negativity, then continue. Too much negativity will just break your momentum. Why not shower yourself with blessings? When you succeed, don't forget those people who supported you. Number four, you evaluate. Evaluate your progress. Are you making realistic approach towards your career? Are you winning the dream? Or are your resources enough to push forward? Then you have to evaluate. If not, then pause for a while. Pause for a moment. Think about it. And do something so that you can continue. In the middle of your studying in college, you will realize at some point that your financial resources will not be enough to pay for your tuition, miscellaneous trainings, and many other fees, including the photocopying of, of the notes, your, your thesis, and many others. So you try to, to pause for a while. If there is a need to find a job while in college, do it. Labor is honor. I always salute working students. Naalala ko nga way back in college, mas marunong, mas magaling ang mga classmate kong may mga part-time jobs. Naging marunong sila dahil marunong silang mag-budget ng kanilang time. That they say to themselves, I have to study now because later I have work. So wala akong time to, to go around. Wala akong oras sa inom-inom dahil I have work. It's my only time to study. No. If there are any barriers preventing you from achieving it, then ask yourself, how can you eliminate those barriers? 
if you have limited resources, then again, like what I said, you have to search for ways to increase your resources so you could continue forward. If you are having a hard time, don't hesitate to ask for help. Alam mo, some people are willing to help, yet they are hesitant because you might not want to ask help from them. From among the people on your support system, determine who are willing to help you, who are willing to assist you in achieving your goals. At the end of the day, don't forget to express gratitude on the help they provided you. Tell them thank you. Express to them. Show them that you thank them. It will cost you zero pesos to show gratitude. Lastly, don't forget to educate yourself every day, even outside the walls of the classroom. While education can also be attained outside, uh, like uh, experiences in the work setting, formal education must also be considered so that you can advance the corporate ladder. Your diploma is as important as your skill. In the workplace setting, if you feel there is already no challenge, try spicing up your job and introduce some innovations. Don't hesitate to reach out to your boss and present what needs to be improved. Volunteers will always be appreciated. Always volunteer to do the work. But make sure that you don't overlap with your other workmates job in the corporate world what is important is not just having a big salary you have to look for a better boss or a better leader or a better manager if you have a better manager a leader you have a mentor mentors are very important when it comes to doing our work because mentors will place you in the path to become the person he is now but there are also people who will never mentor you simply because they are insecure or they don't want you to to reach uh, a level that they have reached now look for those people who are stewards who are brothers who will help you to achieve in life in the corporate world Career growth is very important because if there is no option, some workers may try to find a new job and they will resign anytime soon. If you are the boss or the supervisor, make sure you provide an open space for your employees to grow personally and professionally. If you are the employee, chances are you will get bored if you have routinary work. And the best thing to do is to assist others while doing their respective jobs. Your co-workers will surely be thankful for that. Secondly, you can have a sideline. Doing so will challenge your time management skills too. Before I end, let me share with you that aside from being a congressional staff, a legislative staff, a teacher, a community organizer, and a chief operating officer of a maritime school, I also own I also own a restaurant with some good friends, which just opened last October 8th. We just celebrated our second month. So you see, after hurdling office hours, part of my obligation is to also drop by and check the restaurant operations in as much as possible. When opening a business, you have to take risk. When we talk about risk, there is a possi possibility of losing something like your capital. That is why it's not a joke. You have to monitor your sales every single day. You have to monitor whether your customers are coming back or not. You have to monitor whether your operations are still uh, good for your customers. What do I want to point here, ladies and gentlemen, leaders, is that when you commit to something, make sure your commitments are not left behind. 
it will speak more of your character. Honor your commitments. The time, the people, and the events. In the course of career development, what is important is that you think good and do good because when you do so, all the good things will happen. Leadership and career goes together. It is not an overnight venture. You need to put your entire self and dedication into it in order to succeed. Now my question is, can we do it? Yes, we can. It's your turn. Thank you so much and good morning.